there's a topic that I often see come up around forums and in the comment sections of my videos. And it's about this idea that bass is harder to produce than mid-range and treble frequencies, specifically for headphones. And I wanted to jump in today and quickly break down the physics and the science behind that to help you understand why that's completely inaccurate. And before we jump into this, I should explain that this is not the world according to me. This is not my opinion. I've spoken to multiple audio engineers who design and build headphone amps about what they take into account when thinking about driving difficult loads. And all of them have said the exact same consistent thing to me, which is what I'm going to tell you today. And where all this begins is understanding what power is all about when it comes to headphones and speakers. So I am going to talk about this in terms of both headphones and speakers, because it's sort of different for the two of them, but it depends on the design of them as well. And the first thing we have to understand is what power is all about. So power is expressed in either watts or milliwatts, and it's made up of the amount of voltage and the amount of current that a headphone or a speaker driver needs to create a certain sound. And so the power needed to produce the sound out of the speaker driver, and when I say speaker driver here, I'm talking about it could be the headphone speaker driver, the single driver inside a headphone cup, or it could be the actual speaker driver or drivers mounted within a floor standing loudspeaker. And so what's involved there is that when we look at the sensitivity figures for those speakers or headphones, that's telling us how much power is needed to reach a certain volume. And so if you see that a pair of speakers are rated at, say, 86 decibels per watt, that means that you're going to need one watt of power to produce 86 decibels at one meter away. What we don't know specifically there is the voltage and the current requirements. And what's often also not published there is the frequency at which that's measured. And that's going to be really key as we move a bit further into this discussion. What you'll normally see when we start thinking about headphones are ratings that are in decibels per milliwatt. And what you'll generally see is ratings around 96, 94, maybe 100 decibels. If we're talking IEMs, it can get up to 110 decibels. The point being that earphones and headphones are far more sensitive than speakers. And that all comes down to the fact that they're very close to you. They don't have to travel through the air between, say, a speaker that's one or two meters away and your ears. The drivers in headphones are right there next to your ear, and then on top of that, they're much smaller and therefore much easier to move. And so, so far we're talking about the ability of these drivers to move air at any frequency, although it's often measured at 1 kilohertz, and that does have some bearing here, and particularly because most speakers and headphones don't have a completely flat response. So let's take a look at that bit now as well. If we take a look at the frequency response graph that I've got on screen right now, and it doesn't matter what the frequency graph is from or how it's been measured, all we need to look at here is the fact that the frequency response that I'm showing you on screen is relatively flat, but not completely flat. And what that means is that for the exact same amount of power delivered into that headphone, the amount of output volume you're going to get is going to vary slightly. And so you'll see that for the same amount of input power, this headphone's going to give you relatively linear response from bass all the way through into the treble. But as we start to get into the treble, you'll see that there's that sharp drop, that sort of trough there. That's showing us that at those frequencies, this headphone is less sensitive. And so this is what I said before. If the measurements have been taken at, say, 1 kilohertz, that could be different for a headphone like this than the sensitivity at, say, 2 kilohertz. And so this is where things start to get a little bit more tricky, but it also gives us some insight into bass. Because what you can see here is that for the exact same amount of power, you're going to get exactly the same amount of bass signal out of this headphone as you're going to get mid-range signal. So in other words, bass is not more difficult to drive than mid-range on this particular headphone. And it would be lovely if things were this simple. It would be lovely if we could just look at this graph or look at any frequency response graph for a headphone and immediately say, this headphone is more difficult or less difficult than bass. But it's a bit more complicated than that. And that's because we also have to start thinking about impedance. So generally speaking, when we're talking about bass drivers in particular, and there are going to be some exceptions here, but when we're talking about bass drivers, in the case of headphones, we're often talking about planar magnetic or dynamic drivers producing the bass. Now there are of course ribbon drivers, there's the AMT drivers that are used in things like headphones, that's HEDD phones, but for the sake of this discussion, I just want to focus in on planar magnetic and dynamic drivers. And the reason I want to focus on these is that they have very different resistance properties. Resistance is the measurement of how hard it is to push voltage through the particular circuit, whether it's the dynamic driver circuit or the planar magnetic driver circuit. In the case of planar magnetic drivers, they have a consistent resistance at every single frequency. So it's just as difficult to drive a 2 kHz signal through a planar magnetic driver 
as it is to drive a 22 hertz signal through that same driver. And that's because the voltage requirement and the current requirement is exactly the same for both. Now, as we've just seen, if the frequency response changes in terms of the sensitivity at each frequency, that changes a little bit. But that's not really talking about how hard it is to drive it, so much as how much bass comes out or how much mid-range or treble comes out for the same consistent power. And I'll make sense of all this in just a moment for you. Before we get there, though, it's worth now thinking about dynamic drivers. Because dynamic drivers very rarely, if ever, have a completely flat resistance curve. And what that means is that as you look at the resistance of the driver across the different frequencies, it will often have wild swings where it becomes much more difficult to push the voltage into that driver. I've got two examples here that were taken from the old library of inner fidelity measurements back when inner fidelity used to exist. It's now part of Stereophile, but not everything's available there anymore. And what we're looking at first, if I remember correctly, is the impedance measurement for the HD650 headphone from Sennheiser. And as you can see, looking at this, ignore the blue line, it's just the pink line we care about. In that pink line, what you can see is that around about 90 hertz, the impedance is way, way higher. And so even though this is a 300 ohm nominal impedance headphone, at around about 90 hertz, it's got more than 500 ohms of impedance. And what that means is it's going to need a lot more voltage to produce the sound. And so that means your current required is going to go down, your voltage required is going to go up. Before I summarize what that actually means, let's take a look at another example. We're now looking at a measurement of the Focal Clear, and what we can see here is that the Focal Clear, which has a nominal impedance around about 50 ohms off the top of my head, that headphone has a massive spike once again. And so around about the 50 to 60 hertz mark, its impedance jumps all the way up to nearly 350 ohms, meaning once again it's going to need a lot of voltage to produce that bass. However, this still doesn't mean that bass is more difficult. And I know that this might be getting confusing at this point because I haven't put all the pieces together for you yet. But the thing to point out here is that there are lots of different factors that go into determining how hard it is to produce bass, or any frequency for that matter, from a headphone driver or a speaker driver. And the key thing that the impedance is telling us is not how hard or difficult it is to produce the sound, so much as how much voltage or how much current is needed. And so if we think back to the frequency response graphs that I showed you before, the frequency response graph for both the HD650 and the Focal Clear, they don't have wild peaks and troughs around the base in the frequency response measurements. And that's because they're still going to produce the same amount of bass for about the same amount of power, but the difference is how that power is made up. With both of these headphones, as you go down into the bass, they might still require, and I'm going to make these numbers up for a moment, they might still require 5 milliwatts to produce, let's say, 80 decibels of sound. And that could be at 100 hertz, at 50 hertz, at 30 hertz. The difference is that where these peaks sit in their impedance, that specific 5 milliwatts might be made up of more or less voltage or more or less current, and the two of these operate in kind of op in opposition to each other, you could say. So as you need more voltage because the impedance has gone up, you need less current. And then vice versa, as the voltage is dropping because the impedance is dropping, the current required goes up as well. And so the only thing this is actually telling us is how much voltage versus how much current is needed. And as long as your amplifier can produce sufficient power at each of the various impedances, then you've got nothing to worry about. Now at this point it does start to get complicated because when you look at a headphone specification sheet, it tells you a nominal impedance. And if we look at the Focal Clear as an example, its nominal impedance is about 50 ohms. And so normally what we would do is we would look at the power output of the amplifier at about 50 ohms and we'd work out if it has enough. What that doesn't tell us is does the amplifier have enough voltage available to drive the same amount of power into a 320 odd ohm load. And that's where things can get a little bit tricky. But having said that, most amplifiers have enough voltage on tap, it's often the current that is the challenge. And so the increased impedance that we're seeing here, and therefore the increased voltage required, generally won't be a problem. It's often the current that is the problem, and we need less of that as the impedance goes up. And so the long and the short of it is, if you just come back and look at a frequency response graph for any headphone you're looking at, that frequency response graph is a plot of how much output volume you get for the exact same amount of power. So basically, somebody will have taken that headphone, plugged it into an amplifier or some kind of sound output, 
They've turned it to a specific volume and left it there. And then what you're seeing is how much volume is coming out at each frequency across the whole frequency range. Now, if bass was actually harder to drive, you would see that drop away depending on the amplifier used. And the reality is we don't. If, of course, you start off with a very low sensitivity headphone, then all frequencies are going to be more difficult to drive on that one, but not just the bass. It's going to be difficult at 10 kilohertz. It's going to be difficult at 100 hertz. It's going to be difficult at 30 hertz. The sensitivity is a full bandwidth measurement with some variation as we see in our frequency response plots. And so let's now talk a bit about the difference between headphones and speakers, because that's where all this began. You see, when we start talking about driver size, small drivers are much easier to move. So a tweeter or a mid-range driver is easier than a big woofer if we're starting to talk about speakers. It's also why, as I said before, that headphone sensitivity measurements are in the decibels per milliwatt, while speaker sensitivity is measured in decibels per watt. That's partly, as I said before, about the distance at which you're sitting from the speakers, but it's also because the larger drivers are harder to move. They're physically heavier, they've got often stronger magnets and stronger suspension mechanisms, and it makes the driver mechanically and physically harder to push. That means more voltage and current required from the amplifier, and that makes them less sensitive. And then if we come back around and think about driver size, you've got your tweeter, you might have a 4-inch mid-range, and then a big 10-inch woofer, for instance. That 10-inch woofer is going to be harder to drive, and this is where this myth began. In the case of speakers, it's absolutely harder to make a woofer move than a tweeter. And in fact, if you look at the maximum power capabilities of a speaker, if it's broken down by the tweeter, the mid-range, and the woofer, for instance you'll generally find that the tweeter has much lower power handling than the woofer because it doesn't need as much. And so this is where this myth began. Because bass is harder to produce in full-size speakers, people transitioned that same logic into headphones without thinking about the fact that the driver in a headphone is a full-range driver. It's got exactly the same general overall properties from bass all the way through to treble. And so the sensitivity figures, whilst as we've said, they will vary a little bit based on the frequency response characteristics of that headphone, but generally speaking, they're not vastly different from one frequency to the next. And if it doesn't tend to taper off in the bass, then it's no more difficult to produce bass on it. And so to bring all this together, what this tells us is that if you're running multi-driver speakers, and if perhaps you're running separate amplifiers and bi-amping them, then the bass amplifier will need more power. That is a truth. Where that might vary is if you're running a single full-range driver speaker, that's going to be just like a headphone setup, where the sensitivity of that driver is one sensitivity, and yes, it's going to vary a little bit at different frequencies, but you can take that sensitivity and consider that to be your standard across the entire frequency range. If we take that across now and think about headphones, we kind of need to split this into two camps. There's headphones and single driver IEMs, where the sensitivity figure that you see in the specifications gives you a really good sense of how hard it is to drive at every frequency, in terms of the specific milliwatts or watts required. If we then think about multi-driver IEMs, where you might have dynamic drivers, planar magnetic drivers, and balanced armatures, for example, that's a little bit different where it might be slightly more difficult to push the dynamic driver than a balanced armature. But the reality is when we're talking about IEMs, they're so small that the sensitivity levels are off the charts and it's irrelevant to start thinking about it being more difficult to drive the bass. And so the key thing when we're talking about headphones is only to think about whether you have enough voltage or current on hand. And as I said before, if your amplifier has enough power at the impedance of the headphone, if it's also got sufficient power to drive a decent amount of voltage into, say, a 300 ohm load for those big swings you might see in some dynamic driver headphones, if that's the case, you have nothing to worry about or think about. And that's why the only thing you really need to think about when buying a headphone amp to drive your headphones is whether or not it's got sufficient power on tap to drive the nominal impedance of your headphones and the sensitivity level of your headphones to a volume level that's a good amount above your normal listening level. So in other words, if you listen, and ideally you should only listen, at about, say, 80 to 85 decibels maximum for extended listening sessions, and that's because anything higher can be doing damage to your hearing, if you're listening at 80 decibels or so, then all you need to do is make sure you have an amplifier that can get that headphone to 100 or 110 decibels comfortably. And there's calculators on the net to work all that out for you. But the other thing you can do is just take the figures required for, say, 80 or even 90 decibels, 
and then just double it. That's not a perfect mathematical solution for it, but it gives you a good sense. If you've got double the power on tap, then you're going to have enough to cover any sort of swings, any slight drops in sensitivity at different frequencies. And the end result is you're going to have plenty of voltage and current on tap to drive the headphone of your choice. Now, when it comes to speakers, as I said, it's a little bit different, particularly if you're getting into bi-amping your speakers. That's where you're going to need to look at the sensitivity of the different drivers and how they need to be set up for bi-amping. If you're using a single power amp for a multi-driver speaker, then you're just going to have to go on the specifications provided to you. And then again, make sure you've got excess headroom available. And the good news in all of this is that there are very few headphones or speakers on the market that really need as much power as people say they do. Unfortunately, people conflate the idea that a speaker or a headphone sounds better with Amplify X. They conflate that with the idea that Amplify X has more power without thinking about the fact that it actually might also be a better amplifier. And another way you can think about that is if you take a Ferrari and you run that around a racetrack, you're probably going to get a faster time than if you take an old bomb of a car, dump a really ridiculously powerful engine into it and try and get the same time around the racetrack. Because the overall quality of the design and the implementation of the engine, the suspension and the chassis in the Ferrari is all optimised, they might have the same power, but the Ferrari is going to get you around faster. So no longer is that speed around the track about power, it's about the whole picture. And the same is true for amplifiers, whether it's headphone amps or speaker amps. It's about the combination of everything resulting in the quality of the power, not just the sheer output power numbers. And so the long and the short of it here is that bass is no more difficult to produce in headphones or single driver speakers than any other frequency. The only time bass is more difficult to produce is when you actually have a larger, more difficult, heavier driver to move for bass than you do for mid-range or treble. And so hopefully this has cleared up a bit of a myth, hopefully provided some education here. And of course, if you've got any questions or concerns about anything I've said here, leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to chat about it in the comments. For now though, I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you have, please hit the like button and consider subscribing and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music, so happy listening, be kind to each other, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. <laughs>